is that manifesto was founded 20 years ago when the war came down. So the idea was to communicate different art contexts in the east, the west, the south and the north. So then it was only once in Ljubljana, which is probably the only country from ex-Yugoslavia which survived. But there had never been a city in what it used to be Warsaw Pact, if you see it in kind of geopolitical. So it must have been the initiative of Dr. Petrovsky to say, okay, Hermitage is going to be 250 years and Manifesto is celebrating 20 years, so number 10. And then a year ago, very little time, three people were asked, would you be interested to make a concept for Manifesto in St. Petersburg? And when I got a phone call, all the people they asked had museums in school. So when I got a phone call in a very kind of unprofessional way, I said, yes, I'm very interested because I've never been there and I know quite a lot, but not really because of books about the complex history, the revolutions in St. Petersburg, the the time from 1940, 41, 42, 43, the blockade, horrible situation, and so on. So, then I made a proposal, not in order to win, because I was keen on doing manifesto, but more on looking behind the scenes of the Hermitage. So, and then they asked me to do it. And what I proposed is pretty much in the grand idea which we did. So it's not, it's more like a birthday to the, to the Hermitage, which really ultimately is a palace hmm? with extraordinary collections. So. No, I think the concept is it's not much of a concept. It's basically just being a guest and showing what I think is very necessary to show. A lot of abstract positions which are unpopular in Russia. <clears throat> Even though historically abstraction was born in Russia to a great extent. And interestingly enough, there were never a, a geographical, cultural context where there were so many fantastic women, you know, Gonjarava and so on. So it's not, I mean, in my preface, I'm just saying manifesto without a manifesto. It's right. Not that I don't think it's important to have a kind of theoretical outline. But this is very kind of low key. I mean, I think this can only be answered in five or six years. Because right now, we are all so happy that it takes place. And it was at times really possible that it would not have taken place. So I, I, I thank very much Dr. Petrovsky for being extremely wise, diplomatic, staying out of detailed conflicts, and primarily, you know, to a really fantastic team. And most of them are Russian and much younger than I am. So I think um, in a couple of years it might mean something. Right now, I don't think it's particularly liked because it doesn't have a kind of a thesis, it doesn't have an anti-thesis, it's not problematic. Um, and maybe it is also not similar to most of contemporary Russian art. But then it is good that there are parallel programs, which is much more pluralistic and in a very interesting setting. So I think the best audience are kind of extremes, 12, 14, 15, 18, or people who 
who are really interested, instead of watching television, they rather go to the Hermitage. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, it's, I've been in a museum for a long time, so it, basically it's good. Everybody is welcome. We are not arrogant at all, right? We will not discriminate anybody. Even Cossacks, who might be very kind of hardcore, uh, political or uh, Russian Orthodox, everybody is welcome, everybody. Great skepticism for contemporary art within the Amitage. You know, they're fantastic curators in all departments. And maybe also because they have not seen the very best of contemporary art. Um, but you see, each institution of that extraordinary importance has a kind of a built-in arrogance. Yes, definitely. And I met the woman who is organizing this in Moscow. And she was very, very good. And uh, I liked you know, talking to her. And I will definitely come here. Yeah. And she told us we should make an exhibition not just for St. Petersburg and for the artists in, in Moscow, but for all of Russia. I don't like biennials usually, but they are very important outside of Europe. I think biennials in Europe are not so necessary anymore, but they are very helpful and very good on the edge, you know, like in Africa or in Asia and so on and so on. So um, it's a kind of a transmission belt. But we have to be careful that they don't become like Olympics, you know. Or, uh, I mean, even though I'm very, very interested in watching soccer, football, but the structure we all know of FIFA, you know, is questionable. The structure of Olympics is also questionable because it's only competitive, right? So, how do you avoid a kind of competitiveness? But it's also, you make a decision in favor of something, not against something. So I think this will be an exhibition. Here, I was just thinking, this is probably what people would have liked to see. This is something which I like too. So, I definitely will come.